Today I'm going to talk to you about a Wharton Cockroft machine that I made. It's actually an array. It's uh, 32 uh, capacitors, each one is 6 kilovolts. And um, I've got 64 diodes. Um, you know, I've doubled up the diodes by connecting them in series, and they're 1 in 4007 diodes. I've got one of these uh, little power inverters. You can get these things, these are about 10 bucks each. And this takes 12 volts DC and uh, outputs 950 volts uh, AC. And so that's, that's, that's a pretty good um, conversion there. Very low current. You can, uh, these things are used for uh, cold cathode lights, CCLs, uh, in like laptop computers and things like that to run those cold cathodes. And you know, it's a lot cheaper to just buy one of these prefab units than to try and make one. In each individual component would cost you more than this whole thing costs. And I got this on off of eBay. I'm using a 12 volt battery, just a lead acid battery, sealed. And uh, you know, my total, at, you know, 32 capacitors, each one at a thousand picofarads is extremely low capacitance when you've added all those up in series. So, you know, you don't get a whole lot of current from this thing. You get some good voltage, but no current. And so I'm going to connect it up and just show you the type of sparks. I mean, they're really low current sparks. You don't even hear any hissing from it. Anyway, let's bring these two leads near to each other. Very low uh, current. This thing probably wouldn't even hurt if it zapped you. So, uh, so that's it. Now, if you want to improve the output from this, what you need to do is connect it across uh, something with a higher capacitance. I'm going to show you that uh, in a what second. What I did is I got um, a bottle. This is like a um, a, uh, a tablet bottle, you know, a capsule bottle. I think there were actually gummy vitamins in this particular bottle. And I just marked the top part of the parallel edges of the bottle and then just cut it off right at the top. And then what I did is I used adhesive aluminum foil on both the inside and the outside to create, um, you know, essentially a Leyden jar. So this is really a pretty nice uh, high voltage capacitor. And I've put uh, some high voltage leads with alligator clips on both the inside and the outside. And what I'm going to do now is connect it to this uh, very low current output um, I added some, insul uh, some uh, liquid insulation which is basically liquid insulating tape uh, at the top at the edges of the uh, the uh, adhesive foil to reduce corona losses because you get some corona discharge when this thing is fully charged and it um, will drain it so I've, all, I've covered all of that in this uh, kind of uh, nasty black stuff which is finally just uh, dried out and it reduces the uh, corona loss quite a bit. So let's connect this up to our uh, array and see what happens. What I've done is I've connected this capacitor now to the uh, array, Cockroft uh, Walton array here, and uh, I'm going to connect a battery and we'll see the difference in current. We're getting much larger currents here. Pretty significant. Pretty good output. And this, this is still, still charged, so let's make sure this is just charged before we touch it. There we go. Now we can safely touch that. Now here's a Wharton Cockroft, or Cockroft Wharton, with significantly more output. This consists of 20 kilovolt uh, capacitors. The other one only has six, and I've got 20 of these connect, 24 of these connected together in series. Again, they're 1,000 picofarads, so I'm getting very low capacitance and low current on the, on the output sparks. I've embedded the whole thing in, in wax. There's the capacitors. You can see them there, just barely, uh, through the wax. And there's 24 of those in total. I'm using a 2 kilovolt inverter, 12 volts input, and 2 kilovolts output into this array of 24. So in theory, 
without, you know, if I wasn't getting any voltage losses and corona, I'd be getting a good um, uh, 48 uh, kilovolts out of this thing. So, uh, and the capacitors are way uh, overrated for the voltage that's going in them. So, you know, so they should be fairly safe. So let's connect this thing up and let's see what we get in terms of an output. And I've sort of put this whole thing in a plastic casing to protect it and to protect the uh, operator from shocks. So we'll connect some leads and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, I've got this thing now connected to the uh, uh, sealed lead acid battery. I put some leads in. Let's see what it does. We're getting some uh, low power sparks there. It's fairly uh, rapid sparks. Lots of ozone production from those. Okay, let's. Uh, that's true. Okay, I've now connected this, this capacitor to it, and we'll see what the output looks like with the capacitor connected. You ready for some action? Seriously, big hot spot. That's some pretty uh, intense uh, activity there. I'm going to separate these a bit more. I think you're getting a better voltage with this. See if it will still give that. That's a good inch long. Let's look at it again. 